Welcome to First Church. I'm Beth Beeman. Today I'm reading from 1 Corinthians, verse 4. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you. Well, hello and welcome to First Church. I have a sermon for you about strength. And I want to start with a story from Pine Swamp, from this beautiful swamp here at the top of Pine Swamp, which is about the wood duck. And the wood duck is a little beautiful duck with green iridescent feathers and beautiful lines and golds and creams and it comes into its colors right about this time of year right at the end of the fall and it's just br popping with brilliance and brightness and the thing about that wood duck is that it loves a mess it loves to swim in all of this messy tangly brushy dead woody swampy area that's its favorite place that's its happy place and so when you're looking for the wood duck you come up here to the top of Pine Swamp and you won't have a lot of trouble finding it. It's, it's here, it's building community up here, it's swimming around, it's dabbling, it's having a wonderful time. And it's one of the brightest, most beautiful birds of this time of year. When we think about a mess, the question arises, like, what do we do with it? Because we feel like we are in a mess and we look at the country in a mess, we look at the globe in a mess. and we, Paul, writing a letter to the Corinthians, was also writing to a group of people in a mess. So I want to talk to you about facing a mess and where our strength can be as we look at it and what it can give us, how, it can, how, how the scripture can help us as we face chaos, because we're surely in the midst of it, especially as we come into Advent right now. When Paul wrote his first letter to the Corinthians, he was looking at this community that had gone through so, so, so much. You know, 200 years earlier, the whole of the, the city of Corinth had been emptied out by the Romans. It had been cleared because the, um, the Roman armies had gone through and, and sacked it, taken hostages and cleared it all out. It was empty. It was a ghost town. And then when Julius Caesar saw that, he, he um, thought about it, you know, 140 years later and wanted to repopulate the city of, Ro of Corinth so that there could be, you know, this, this big trade route. And so it could have, it could have um, you know, commerce going back through it so the Roman Empire could use it again in certain ways. And so what Julius Caesar did was he repopulated Corinth with freed slaves and with veterans of the Roman army. And so into Corinth poured this new population and they were busily setting up, a, a, you know, a, um, a city as best they could and finding their ways to be leaders and finding their ways to, to build community and to make the city work. And it was this brand new city that Paul was writing to when he wrote his letter to the Corinthians. And it was a diverse city, you know, it was with veterans, with Romans, with freed people who had been enslaved. And as they were finding their way, 
it was complicated. And Paul knew that as he wrote to them and was trying to build little churches in Corinth. And, and, and Paul could see that, that the complexity of that diverse city meant that there'd be conflicts in it. And surely he'd gotten some reports of conflicts, which he thought about and was interested in how to, you know, um, to help. He was writing about helping people face the mess that was Corinth in certain ways. And there was conflict of, of, um, of power or over who had wisdom and who didn't. And there was conflict about gossip and who was gossiping and who, how that was undercutting the community. And there was conflict of class, you know, the, the people who'd always had wealth or the people who'd been through war or the people who'd started poor. All of that meant that um, people were having trouble getting along. And yet there was this overarching theme, too, of wisdom, like different people experienced God's love and God's power helping them regardless of their background and their upbringing and their social class. And so into that chaos of mess, of conflict, of fighting, of gossip, of jousting for power, Paul writes his letter to the Corinthians. And, you know, at the very beginning of the letter is the bit that we were we were thinking about for today as we begin Advent. We were thinking about this idea that Paul writes that, you know, you have everything you need because God gives you strength is what Paul says in the very first chapter. You have everything you need, even in the mess that you're in, because God gives you strength. And I just love to think about this, 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 this spiritual blessing that comes from Paul. You have everything you need, even in the mess that you're in, because God's giving you strength. And there you are in your mess with exactly what you need. When I think about that and that little bit of a blessing for us today, I think about the the, the local situation. You know, here we are in this little local country of the United States in a mess, you know, arguing over who's in charge and what the power is going to be and how to transfer it. And, and I love this gift in all of that depression and uncertainty that we're in, that we have what we need to make our way through that and to, to make, make our peace with it. And then I like to think about it too, you know, globally, because there have been so many losses in the globe this year with, with dictators in, in various countries, and, you know, in the Philippines and in Brazil and, you know, powerful power hungry mean spirited energetic dictators making things so miserable and this image that perhaps we have everything we need to even face down dictatorship is beautiful and then when you think about it in terms of health too with 1.4 million people have died of covid in the world and it's just heartbreaking that we've lost so much it's a mess globally um Locally, it's a mess. And then in this country, too, with so many people lost to the race, the, to racism. And so many people lost to, to, um, the, the, to despair because the loneliness that COVID has bubbled up and brought up in people has meant increasing addictions and other kinds of despair-related losses of beloved people. And with all that, with all that mess, with all that loss, not to mention what's happening ecologically, Paul writes, you have what you you need. You have everything you need in the midst of the mess you're in because God will give you strength. And I I think to myself, like, how are we to understand that? How How do we make sense of it? How do we understand it? And Dave Shire, who was the minister here in this town at our church the year that it got struck by lightning, said something brilliant to us last week. He said, you know, the word religion means re-ligamenting and that is such a powerful image of putting things back together you know like uh, the ligaments are the things that bind your muscles together with your bones with your your in your body they they they're your your flexible your um your connecting tissue and if if religion reconnects us perhaps out of despair and mess into something more cohesive That's a beautiful gift for us. And then you have this image, too, of the shepherds on the hillside. You know, there they are in their own mess in Jerusalem, longing for peace. And and they don't know what's going to come to them, but they're longing and they're looking and they're waiting and they're hoping for a promise. And and sure enough, there's there's soon going to come a promise to them that says you have everything you need. 
and you can wait and watch because goodness is going to come for you and you're going to be okay in your mess because because love is on its way and then there's these other images too you know like for us personally we may feel like our own personal lives may be such a mess we we might not be at peace with our loved ones or even within our own souls we might be depressed we might be stuck in our loneliness and not sure which way to turn and and I feel like Paul also says to us, don't despair, take heart, because you have what you need in the midst of the mess of your own personal soul, because there's strength from God for you. And you know, I love Mary Murkowski's beautiful, Murzowski's beautiful way of talking about that. When she writes the welcoming prayer, she says, you you say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome when you pray all the sorrows. Welcome sorrows. Welcome when you pray all the guilt. Welcome guilt. Welcome when you pray all the second guesses. Welcome. Welcome when you pray all the joy. Welcome. You you just sit with every bit of it. And you, you pray that God will help you understand it as your teacher. And you pray with a deep gratitude for that that mess of the world and the country and the town and your own life. You pray that there's some 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 brilliant insight and gift that that those very specific uncomfortable things in your unconscious that bubble up or in your loneliness that stay with you can be your teachers and your helpers and I just love to think of that you know that there's this this bliss to come for us that'll help us through through the hardest times not over and against it not combating it or fighting it but actually working together with the mess, that the mess is our teacher, that God is in the mess bringing us something new that if we can just wait and listen, we will find and we'll, we'll be okay and we'll grow spiritually from it, that the mess is a, a bit of a blessing even, even as we find our ways to work for each other and to help each other through their, through their hard times. prayer by Mary Morozowski. Gently become aware of your body and your interior state. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome everything that comes to me in this moment because I know it is for my healing. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. 
I let go of my desire for security. I let go of my desire for approval. I let go of my desire for control. I let go of my desire to change any situation, condition, person, or myself. I am open to the love and presence of God and the healing action and grace within. Here is a quote by T. Tempest Williams. The eyes of the future are looking back at us and they are praying for us to see beyond our own. My name is Noreen Murphy. I'm a member of First Church of Ipswich, and I'm very proud to be here today. I'm actually a new member, and I'm happy that we have an opportunity to share with each other, even though we can't be in person. I have a prayer to read today. God of justice and peace from the heavens, you rain down mercy and kindness that all on earth may stand in awe and wonder before your marvelous deeds. Raise our heads in expectation that we may yearn for the coming day of the Lord and stand without blame before our Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So as we come to our meditation and our benediction, I want to invite you to pray with that prayer from Mary Marzowski, that beautiful gift to welcome the Mass. And here we are at Pine Swamp in this tangle that's both unruly and glorious and it's full of birds and it's chaos and it's elegance and as we come to our own welcoming of our own thoughts and feelings, whatever arises, just welcome it. Whatever guilt you're living in, just welcome it. Whatever joy you're in the thick of, just welcome it. And we will sit together in our meditation, welcoming and waiting for the gifts that Advent will bring us and that our prayers will bring us and that God will bring us today. Welcome.
as we come to the end of our meditation, I'll just sing you that song again from Jim Finley and Alana Lewandowski. Keep your heart open and your mind open to keep your mind open and your heart open to god bless you and keep you in the heat of the day god bless you and keep you in the night time too and now brothers and sisters the peace of the winding road be under your feet and the peace of the shining stars be over your heads and the peace of the warm wind be always at your backs. And the deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you, body, mind, and spirit, this day and every day. Go in peace. Amen.